Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael P. Roman. President Trump reignited his war of words with the media this weekend, once again taking to social media to condemn CNN as fake news while claiming that he passed on Time Magazine's offer of a photo shoot and interview because it wouldn't guarantee that he'd be named its person of the year. The sparring comes at a crucial legislative time for the president as he prepares to sit down with congressional leaders tomorrow to push for a vote on tax reform legislation that he's eager to sign by Christmas. Well, there's never a shortage of Trump-related topics to discuss with Ellis Hennigan, who happens to write the Trump's America column in Metro and whose brand new book is titled Trumpitude, The Secret Confessions of Donald's Brain. Ellis, thanks for talking to us again. <laughs> there is no shortage of material. You're right about that, my Absolutely. friend. Absolutely. So, you know, as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, the president decided to use Thanksgiving weekend to once again go after CNN, in this case CNN International, which he claims is misrepresenting the United States to the world because of its fake news, and Time Magazine, which, because it didn't absolutely guarantee that he'd be uh, the person of the year yet again. Uh, what's the point of this? What does he have to gain, or does he even care? Well, we shall know ye by the enemies that you keep, right? <laughs> uh, and, and at this point, uh, Donald Trump has uh, singled just about everybody yeah. in the media. So none of us should feel like we're, uh, we're the odd organization out. Uh, anyone who is actually using journalism to cover this presidency is, uh, is a target of this man. Okay, so that's the point, yeah, right? Just, uh, don't, don't let it make you feel bad, okay? <laughs> okay. Because we're all in this together. All right, thank you, Ellis. Thanks for that. Now, as I also said, the president sits down with congressional leaders tomorrow in order to push for the tax reform legislation um, that is so critical for him and for Republicans in Congress. What happens if they don't get this through, if it becomes another uh, repeal and replace well, they fiasco? Both, they both need a victory. Right. I mean, uh, the one thing they have not been able to achieve, while Trump has changed some stuff about America, uh, getting some kind of significant legislative victory is uh, something that he cannot brag about and Republican congressional leaders cannot brag about. I think at this point, Robbie, he'll pretty much sign anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, it would be nice if it helped the super rich. <laughs> but uh, at this point, I think if it's a piece of legislation and there's a signature line, he's pretty much ready to sign it. Well... But what's your best guess? Will it pass? Um, I, I think it may. I, I mean, I think that pressure is so great. There are still some pretty severe divisions inside the Republican caucus in the Senate. And so, uh, you know, there's some landmines that still need to be navigated. Uh, five or six uh, senators still... Uh, Republican? Uh, Republican, yeah, Republican senators? Senator. Yeah, that's all that matters. Don't uh -huh. Forget about the Dems. Well, oh, he's meeting with Dems anyway. Yeah, but but that's not gonna he's not going to get any of those votes. But if okay. the Republicans hang together, they can do pretty much anything. So, you know, despite the fact that Republicans in Congress almost universally are shunning and are attacking Roy Moore because of the sexual allegations against him, the president has decided not to do that. He hasn't quite endorsed him, uh, but he spent most of his time attacking his opponent, Doug Jones, saying he'd be a disaster. Smart political move? Well, liberal Jones, right? Yeah, yeah. A, there's always got to be a nickname in these things. Um, you know, I think it's the same strategy we've been seeing for uh, this first year of the presidency, which is... Uh, Focus on the base, uh, be super rough and aggressive in, uh, in all your commentary, keep pounding, um, don't try to answer the complicated, nuanced questions like what happens when this uh, teen dater or alleged sexual mm. molester uh, shows up in the Senate in January. I Believe me, Mitch McConnell is hoping that's not going to happen, but I don't think Donald Trump cares. Really? Okay. Well, Ellis, as you know, uh, Donald Trump isn't the only political leader standing by, a, a party colleague, uh, Nancy Pelosi, former speaker uh, and now minority leader, has called um, John Conyers an icon of women's issues and says that he deserves due process, while at the same time she's attacking Donald Trump and attacking Roy Moore. Um, blatant double standards, as some conservatives say it is? Is it too much to ask that we should be able to judge sexual harassment cases mm -hmm. based on the facts? Right? It seems, seems to me both parties have a problem here, right? I mean, the tendency is to defend your own and attack the other side. But this really ought to be one of these issues that we don't run immediately to our corners in and say, you know, what does the evidence show? What did the guy do? What can you prove? And what's the appropriate punishment? Oh, and by, and by the way, these cases are different from each other's. There is <laughs> bad, worse, and yeah. worse. And sure, it would be nice if we could differentiate right. a little bit. All right. Ellis, well, let's turn to your new book, Trumpetude, The Secret Confessions of Donald's Brain. First of all, what is Trumpetude? 
Well, it really is, is how the world looks through Donald's eyes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're constantly uh, giving our analysis, mm -hmm. but how does this all look uh, from his perspective? And it is, uh, it, it can be, uh, it can be, well, but you know what it's like? It's like standing in the middle of a paintball fight, right? People are <laughs> shooting from all directions. You know you're not going to get out clean. And what has given you such intimate access to the president's brain? Well, listen, anyone who's been a reporter in New York uh, all these years like you and I have, have uh, been following him around, trying to understand what he does, uh, mm. putting some kind of logic to this mm. stuff. And, you know, we do the series, journal. this was my point to bring a little bit of humor, yeah, it, it is humor funny. to the equation. No, I mean, it's, uh, uh, but aside from making people laugh with this book, which they will, um, you also pose uh, a series of questions in the book that you attempt to answer, one of which is, uh, what does Donald Trump know that the rest of us haven't figured out yet? What is that? We're a lot dumber than we think we are. <laughs> I mean, who would have expected, Rafi? Yeah. I mean, seriously. And by the way, we keep debating not whether he's presidential enough, but is he uh, more like a third grader or a second grader? <laughs> okay. Mark my words, by midterms, it'll be kindergarten. Oh, we'll be right. debating. Okay, Ellis. Well, Ellis, thanks again for talking to us today. Great seeing you.